Afternoon guys, uh, just going to talk about Brexit today, it's something that came up uh, yesterday, uh, Peter was over, um, but also I, ma I made a little comment on my Facebook about it because I expected the failure of the British government anyway, I, it's always been my argument, when I first met Peter, probably about a year ago now, we were talking because he had heard that I'm quite pro-EU. But one of the things that a lot of people don't realise is I'm pro-EU in the sense of freedom of movement, things like that. But at the same time, I am very anti-open border and all that stuff as well. But the whole point of my argument has always been the failure of the British government. Um, you've got old like Neil Kinnock and whatever that has fleeced it to the max. You've got like what's going on now where... Um, buy me out Boris has basically thrown the cabinet in turmoil on purpose and I want to stress that everything in this video is my personal opinion and personal thoughts on this. I want to clarify that I do not think that this was any accident. I actually think this was pre-planned and it was expected. I mean May getting into power, I think, was simply just everybody else stepping back and she was the only person stood there and she's like the school prefect that just wants to please her ma her masters. I'm not trying to say there's conspiracy theories, but just that sort of like, I, I want to be important sort of thing. As such, she took the job. But at the same time, I look at everything she's done relating to immigration, G4S and the Olympics and all that sort of stuff, and then I just go... She ain't fit for purpose. Um, but at the same time, was it pre-planned? I think it was. At the end of the day, everyone else stood back. She's a sacrificial pawn. She's not important. She's not relevant to the Conservatives. Um, so the point being is, I don't think they'd be bothered if she goes out in a uh, ball of flames, which may actually happen. Um, every time she's tried to do something, she's she's had stuff leaked to the media from her own cabinet. Every time she's tried to do stuff, um, she's had betrayal in her own cabinet. This is not a person that's inspired um, the country or leadership, from, even in her own party. She's she's a, become a bit of a brunt of a joke in many ways. The media sees her as a joke. Um, from the stance of people trying to deal with immigration, they see her as a bit of a, um, I try not to use some words that are quite, uh, quite bold, um, but let's just say she would be more in line with uh, Germany in the 1940s. Um, but the, the point being is, I just think she's completely incompetent. And I knew she was incompetent when she got into that position. Cameron leaving left this gap. Why did she end up there? She was she wasn't relevant. You know, at the end of the day she she's never achieved anything. That's how can you be a leader without actually ever achieving something in your life? And everything you have done has been a failure. Well, I think this is what's happening right now because I think the the whole point is this was pre planned in my mindset that the whole collapsing of the cabinet and the reshuffling, the messing around could lead to a, a leadership challenge, then the leadership challenge will lead to an election and this will drag things out for the foreseeable future. Um, I didn't expect the Brexit to actually go within this time frame. People have been asking me about this and I've said, well, I actually think it'll be seven to ten years. Even though the EU is saying you must do this, you must do that, the UK will drag its heels where it can and if they are forced out then it reinforces the UK's uh, pro-Brexit stance in that sense uh, which doesn't do the EU favours anyway so either way if they're forced out it means that the EU is the bad guy and if they delay it until the EU force them out the EU is the bad guy and if there's a reshuffle going on it's whoever ends up in government and it's going to be one of those governments that nobody actually wants to be part of because they know it's going to be a legacy one of failure because it's going to have the transition period which means there's going to be a lot of um, financial costs to the United Kingdom um, 
people go, oh yeah, not going to pay this, not going to. It's the effect in, internally in the economy as things adjust to it. It's just natural adjustment. Uh, whether it's positive or negative, it's not going to create a boom. I'll tell you that now, it's not going to create a boom. It's going to create a shift of jobs, a shift of um, financial industries and pretty much everything. Um, it's not going to be a case of suddenly it's just going to be a light switch on and things are all going to be fantastic. It's going to be a case of trying to readjust to be able to access things that we are relying on. Well, I say we, it's not me, I'm in Spain. Um, but relying on things like Spain for its food. All those sort of things that are within the EU. And this is why I just find it a complete farce because the UK's leadership has always been poor. It's not become poor, it's always been poor. Um, I'm talking back to the 70s, 60s, yeah, 60s, and it hasn't improved. <laughs> it's got steadily worse because career politicians have evolved into not saying anything whatsoever and trying to avoid all responsibility. And I will step down at the next election once I receive my pension and guarantee that I receive my pension. That's the politicians of today. So, let's see where it goes. Thanks for watching.